Today we will be reviewing over the cardiovascular system, specifically uh, hematology or the study of the blood. And this is going to incorporate microscopic slides as well as blood typing. Now blood is classified as a connective tissue. This is due to the fact that it has a large amount of non-living matrix, in this case the, the blood plasma, and then few sc cells scattered about being the blood cells. The blood cells that we will be looking at will be the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets. In general, blood has a pH of 7.4 and it makes up about 8% of the body weight, averaging out to 4 to 6 liters per person. The liquid portion of the blood is the blood plasma. It's about 50% of the total volume of blood and the plasma is 97% water. The remaining 3% will be the various dissolved substances such as gases, nutrients, antibodies, hormones. And then the formed elements are going to be the cells and the cell fragments. And it will be these formed elements that we will be identifying on our future slides. We will begin our study of our formed elements with our erythrocytes. The erythrocyte is the scientific name for the red blood cells. And each of these small pink cells that we're looking at is a erythrocyte. This larger structure that we see is a white blood cell and we will study those in more detail on future slides. Now notice that our erythrocytes lack a nucleus and a mitochondria. The lifespan for the erythrocytes is about 120 days. Within each of these erythrocytes, there contains about 28 million hemoglobin molecules. Each hemoglobin molecule can carry four oxygen atoms. And so the function of the red blood cells or the erythrocytes is for carrying oxygen throughout the body. And when we look at the erythrocytes, women on average have about 4 to 5 million erythrocytes per cubic milliliter of blood. For men, it's slightly higher, and that's going to be 5 to 6 million. Um, and when we look at this, the difference is with the women losing blood each month. So uh, as we look at the erythrocytes, these will be our red blood cells. These will be the most plentiful cells that you will look at under a blood smear. And erythropoiesis is the scientific name for red blood cell formation. Besides the erythrocytes, we also have our leukocytes. The leukocytes are the white blood cells. And our leukocytes are indicated by all these purple cells. There are various types of leukocytes that we will be looking at. Now you'll notice that each one contains a nucleus and a mitochondria, and it's going to be the shape of the uh, nucleus that we will use for classifying our various types of um, white blood cells. They move in an amoeboid fashion, and they can leave the circulatory system by squeezing in between the capillaries. What we will see is as we look at the different leukocytes is that an increase or decrease in a specific type of leukocyte will be an indication as to what is going on in the body, something that's abnormal and therefore can be a huge clue in diagnosing various conditions. Again, the function of the leukocytes or the white blood cells is to fight off infection. And we have between 5,000 and 10,000 per uh, milliliter in our blood. So here we have our first um, leukocyte or white blood cell that we're going to identify. Now as we notice right here, this darker stained area is the nucleus of the, uh, the cell. And as we look at it, we'll notice that it's multi-lobed or it's spread out like a bead of pearls. And that's indicative of neutrophils. 
Here we have another neutrophil. This one is a little clearer as far as looking like a strung out uh, series of pearls. If we look at neutrophils and we see an increased number in neutrophils, this would be due to some type of acute infection. Uh, it could be an appendicitis, it could be a type of rheumatoid uh, fever. Um, if it's less, then we may be looking at something such as the flu or um, hepatitis or rubella. But as we see these, these are the cells that will destroy and eat bacteria and dead cells wherever we have an inflamed site. These uh, leukocytes right here are eosinophils. Now you will not be asked to identify an eosinophil on your lab practical. We will be going over basic white blood cell anatomy and um, to differentiate between our basophils, our neutrophils, and our eosinophils, a student needs a little bit more knowledge than what they get in a typical anatomy class. So this would be something if you were to take a, a specific class in college on hematology, you could learn to differentiate. However, if an individual is fighting off a parasitic worm infection, then they would see an increase in this particular type of cell. Here we have one additional view of the eosinophils. And uh, I do want to mention that while the neutrophils are the most numerous white blood cells of the body, our eosinophils make up less than 5% of the white blood cells. Here we have a basophil. Now with the basophil, one of the things we want you to see is that this large stained uh, deep blue to purple color that we see often is so numerous that uh, it masks the nucleus. And so the nucleus is not clearly identified here. It will look much more grainy in appearance. Uh, and this is because it contains the histamines and the heparin uh, that causes vasodilations. So when we look at these, uh, these are rarely seen as th they make up less than 1% of the white blood cells. When we see an abnormal high level of basophils, then we would consider something as uh, hemolytic anemia or we would look at something like chickenpox being the cause. Here we have our lymphocytes. Now as we look at our lymphocytes, notice that the nucleus is very large for the size of the cell and it stains that dark purple color. Notice that the nucleus almost fills up the cell, leaving just a very tiny rim of cytoplasm. Now these are the second most numerous leukocytes and they account for 25 to 35 percent of the total white blood cell count. If we were to see an increase in um, our lymphocytes, then we're going to suspect an infection such as mono or some type of chronic inf infection going on. Here we have the monocytes. Now this cell is the largest of the leukocytes and as we look at it, one of the things we want you to be aware of is that the nucleus is either U-shaped or kidney bean shaped. They account for 3 to 9 percent of the uh, white blood cell count and if we were to see an increase in the, mono, uh, the monocytes we would expect something such as malaria or typhoid fever, uh, rocky mountain spotted fever, or possibly a, a type of leukemia. So we have reviewed over the erythrocytes and the leukocytes, the red blood cells and the white blood cells. Our third structure we would like to identify are the thrombocytes or the platelets. Now these are cell fragments and they're indicated by these little tiny dots and those T's on the slide are showing you where those little tiny dots are. And when we look at these, the platelets are going to be important for blood clotting. So this slide and the next slide are two opportunities for you to review and to see if you can identify the type of cells. Uh, you can push pause and see if you can identify the cells and then when you're ready you can um, click again and we'll see if you got them right. So press pause. Well let's see how you did. Um, hopefully you identified these right here as the erythrocytes. We do want you to use the term erythrocyte as opposed to red blood cell. 
each of these structures that we see is a leukocyte or a white blood cell. Here we're going to have our lymphocytes with our very large uh, nucleus. Um, here we're going to have a monocyte, not the clearest monocyte, but it is a monocyte. Right here and right here we would have our neutrophils. Here we have one more uh, practice for us before we move on. And again, you can uh, press pause and see if you can identify the cells and then um, press uh, continue and we'll see if you got them. So press pause. Okay, let's see how you did. Uh, hopefully you got the erythrocytes, which are the red blood cells. Right here you'll notice a thrombocyte or a platelet. All of these purple are our leukocytes or our white blood cells. The grainy ones are the basophils. These right here that are strung out like uh, pearls would be our neutrophils. Right here we have a lymphocyte. Right here we have a monocyte. I would still categorize this one as a neutrophil. So I hope you did well.